All right, how's it going, everybody? Today, I'm back with another video. And this drive isn't pretty, like, it's not super new or anything. Um, there have been some people, I think, that have probably done videos on these already. This is the My Passport SSD. Um, these have been around for a little bit now. They, I think they have them all the way up to two terabytes now. You can get them in, yeah, like I think it's two terabytes and a one out of the 512 and the 256. So I think, and we're gonna see uh, later on, I'm gonna tear this thing down, but basically this should be a standard PCI Express style or a SATA M style drive in an enclosure, I'm hoping, because that would be really cool. Anyway, so this is the 512 gig version. They, they tout about 540 megabytes per second for this drive uh, as far as transfer speeds. Um, we'll see, we'll see what that's all about. Right here on the front, it specifically says up to, so you never know, you never know what this kind of stuff. It's supposed to be obviously pretty damage resistant because of course it's an SSD, there's no moving parts, all that jazz. Comes with some software that we may or may not use. If someone has any questions about that, let me know and I'll actually demo it, but I probably won't. Uh, go through it if you don't have questions because no one ever seems to use the software. But anyway, the drive itself is super light. And one thing I'm really stoked about at this particular drive is that it has a Type-C connector, which is the future of USB in my opinion. So let's get this bad boy cracked open. Not a lot to see here on the box, but let's get it open. And inside this box, we have a little uh, piece of paper that says, hello, hello. So we basically have a little thing on the back, shows you how to connect it up to your computer. Fat technical diagram, and really technical diagram is kind of a silly word because really this is just 13 languages and it has the tech support and warranty phone numbers on it and that's about it. So the drive itself is probably what you're curious about. Oh, and this, ha, this little guy is interesting. You get a little cable with it that is a three inch USB Type-C on both ends, and then you have a standard USB 3.0A to USB Type-C plug to give you a little something like that. That's pretty simple, kind of helpful. Looking at the drive itself, I can tell you that it's quite light, and we'll just kind of slide this out. And it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it doesn't appear to have any activity light on it whatsoever, although I will plug that in in a bit and we'll take a look at it. It looks pretty good. I kind of like the, uh, the two-tone like satin nickel finish and matte black, really like that. Although if you can see this already, the satin nickel finish is already getting quite marred up because it is actually metal and uh, it's attracting fingerprints like crazy. So really that's it. We have a type C connector plugs in like that real simple 512 gigs in your pocket. Boom. And that's about it. I mean, it's, it's nice. It's lightweight. Um, it can probably withstand a hurricane I would imagine other than the water, but even then flash memory is pretty robust. So there we are. So stick around. Second part of the video, we'll do speeds and then a tear down. All right. So we're here with the speed tests and, um, just to kind of look at these, We've uh, first got the one gigabyte test, so one gigabyte of data, and uh, you can see that sequential speeds are pretty much exactly in line in the read category where Western Digital claims 542.2 um, megabytes per second, and uh, writing is just a little lower at 519. That's a pretty decent score. Um, so if we look down the list, the four gigabyte tests, so four gigabyte chunks, uh, Q depth of eight, and um, yeah, we've got about 30 or 300 and uh, 228 respectively. And then we go on down the line looking at our random tests, uh, 268.6 and 225.3. So, you know, it, it handles random writes really, really well, um, which is good. And obviously the sequential just moving stuff in and out of this drive, pretty high. So it's definitely doing well in that category no complaints there. As file size goes up for the 32 gigabyte test, uh, about the same, 538.6 and 518.8. So keeps right in line with that, maybe just ever so slightly lower, but still a pretty strong score. And uh, you can see the random tests are about the same, 292.4, 212.6, 262.9, 211.3. And then of course those, those tiny little tests that uh, slow basically everything down. But uh, 
yeah, so overall, this uh, this drive's done pretty well. And we also have uh, some other speed tests for when it is pulled out of the enclosure. And I'll go ahead and show you that now because I did pull it out of the enclosure and run it straight on the machine. If we pull it out of the enclosure and hook it straight to a motherboard with a PCI Express port um, or the SATA M, you know, connector, we uh, we have 540 and 524 for the one gigabyte test sequential and uh, then about a little bit higher in the rest of the categories as well. So the enclosure itself or the SATA to the SATA slash PCI Express to uh, USB type C slows it down just a little bit, but not too much. Um, and then the uh, the 32 gigabyte test is uh, 539 and 524 for the sequentials. And you can see the rest of the tests underneath that. So that's pretty good. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, no activity light on the hard drive. So nothing to say there. And uh, next is our teardown video, which is uh, coming up as part three of this particular video. You saw me unbox it. You saw me run some tests for speed, which by the way, fast drive, right? Um, 500 megabits per second or megabytes per second average is pretty good, I'd say. Or more like 540, but anyway, so now we're going to see what's inside this thing. So we're going to try to get into this. Um, the one thing that I did notice is that there's really no uh, external screws or anything to be found. Although this, I think this cover slides, will slide off if I manage to. All right, I'm not going to kill you guys with the rest of this watching me struggle. Uh, we're just going to fast forward through this real quick. Basically, the long story short is, uh, well, I basically destroy this enclosure pretty badly in this video, and I feel like an idiot. So, as you can probably see me hammering through it, it's very, very ugly looking, and I'm <laughs> just looking back on the video, I cringe really, really hard. So... I destroyed the, the enclosure. Um, it still works just fine as an enclosure, but <laughs> it got marred up pretty bad. And uh, then at some point, my monkey brain finally figured out that all I had to do was just peel <laughs> the sticker with the serial number off, and there was a screw recessed into the back of that. So it was really easy to get apart after that. And so basically I found that, and then I was able to get the enclosure apart, and we can see here that there's a PCI Express to USB Type-C sort of chip that has the drive on it. There was a huge amount of double-sided tape that was sticking the drive to the enclosure and with some gentle, laws, gentle pulling and finagling, I managed to peel it off the board. And so I got it off and I plugged it in. As you can see here, I'm plugging it into the motherboard and uh, it worked after a few trials and errors with my BIOS. Turns out there were a few motherboards that got released without SATA M capability or SATA in the PCI Express ports right off the gate, but with a BIOS update, totally fine. So I got it on my motherboard and booted it up, and now we have a drive that I can use for things like Steam games and other fun stuff. So that's about it. Uh, thanks for sticking with me if you're still here for the remainder of this video. If you have any questions, comments, leave those below. And that's that's about it for me. Um, see you next time when I destroy something painfully for no reason.